Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex. And today I want to talk to you guys about Alliance Conquest. A lot of people have been asking me, what is this game mode? How can I participate? What do I need to do to win? And why are certain things functioning the way they are? So I wanted to do a breakdown video of Alliance Conquest and go into some strategies that I've discovered and some ideas that I've kind of gathered from my observations, both of my own alliances, uh, Conquest, and also of other alliances on Reddit. Just be forewarned guys, I don't have a 100% complete picture of this game mode. It's very new and a lot of the scenarios that are possible to uh, play out uh, in this Alliance Conquest have not yet happened, at least to my alliance or to other alliances that I've had contact with. So I may get some things wrong, just you know, bear that in mind, a little asterisk on some of the things that I'm going to say. But the, So what's Alliance Conquest? Let's jump into it. You need to be level 15 to play this game mode and once you are level 15 your alliance leader can go over here and your alliance leader can apply to be part of the conquest. There's a 24 hour window for applications before it actually starts because Netmarble needs to gather all of the alliances and then shuffle them out into groups of three because what happens in the next phase after the 24 hour application period is that you're paired up with two other alliances on a map. So your alliance leader needs to take care of that. There's no cost to participate. If you want to win, you can try to win. If you lose, there's no penalty for losing. So it's kind of a fun thing that you can do with your alliance. Um, so once the application uh, part has finished, then you go into the actual conquest mode. The conquest mode, I, I believe, lasts four days. Now it seems like a long time, but you're not actually actively playing for four days. The way that it works is every day is broken up into three eight hour increments. So for six hours you have a defense period or a prep period where you can set up your defenses uh, for the zones that you've conquered. And then for two hours you have an attack period where you can try and attack other uh, lands that you do not currently control to try and control them, to try and conquer them. So that cycles six hours prep or six hours of defense, I should say, and two hours of attack, and that cycles three times per day for four days. So if you tally that up, it's 12 total attacks, three per day, and then 12 total defenses. Really not that much, it's just difficult because it, it rotates every 24 hours, so you need to have people in your alliance at different time zones so that you can coordinate attacks and defenses. If everyone in your alliance is from one time zone, it's gonna be extremely difficult to attack and defend when everyone is sleeping on your time zone. So keep that in mind. Now I wanna give a shout out before I continue to Redditors Reverse Kid Flash and Abby Baby. They put up some really great stuff on the Reddit that I read and that I got some ideas from and this video would not be as robust as it is in terms of information and ideas if it weren't for them. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate your support uh, in the community and helping people out and giving people your you know your brain knowledge <clears throat> so when the game mode starts you're gonna be put in one of three corners you're either gonna be in the bottom left the top or the bottom right as you can see my alliance in the green is on the bottom left hand corner when the game mode starts when the actual game mode starts it's going to start immediately with an attack phase I believe or there may be a prep phase of two hours from when it opens either way it's going to open and you're going to attack and you can only attack borders that neighbor your home base. So right at the beginning, my alliance could only attack zones 7 and 11. It was an inside job. The top alliance could only attack zones 1 and 3. And the bottom right alliance could only attack zones 12 and 9. The zones are denoted by their number, which is pretty much random. But more importantly, by the number of stars. Two star zones are the weakest. Three star zones are medium. And five star zones are the most difficult. Now, when you initially attack before anyone has conquered the zone, you're going to come up against AI opponents. Basically, Netmarble just made a bunch of AI teams and you have to fight them and beat them in order to conquer the area. I've spoken to my alliance members because I didn't actually compete in that very first day and they said that the teams were relatively easy, not a lot of tier 2 characters except for the 5th zone and I believe no native tier 2 characters. So no Doctor Stranges, no Dormammus, no Odins, no Black Order and Thanos. So that's really good. It's definitely plausible for even lower ranked alliances in the 15s and in the 20s to actually get started. You want to get started quickly and early because you can continue to conquer 
different zones after you've conquered your initial zones. There's no cooldown time. So if you conquer zone seven, you can immediately move on and conquer zone number four. Now you do need to wait that 30 minutes for the zone to seal once you've defeated its attacker. So there is a 30 minute uh, window, but once that has been sealed, you can then move on and continue attacking as long as the attack phase of two hours has not ended. So the basic strategy there, guys, is to try and branch out quickly and definitely secure at the very minimum the first two zones that, that are adjacent to your um, your base. Because if you don't do that and you let someone creep up from the bottom or creep up from the top or the side, then you can very easily become boxed in and not have anywhere to go in terms of attacking and defending. Because you can only attack adjacent areas, it's kind of like risk. You do need to plan out your attacks and you do need to see where you're placing your troops. Another piece of advice I want to give you guys as far as attacking is that you should attack with a reasonable team. Not only a reasonable team to defeat them, but also a reasonable team to defend. Because the way that it works is after you've actually defeated the team with your team, your team that won now becomes the defense team. So in this clip you're seeing now, I ended up winning with my first team, Ronin, Destroyer, and Groot. And so that actually became the first defense team. Now, it just so happen that happens that that's a pretty decent defense team, at least against energy attackers. But if I was thinking ahead, I might have placed a different team and I might have maybe been a little bit more stingy with the tier twos if I wanted to balance it out. You don't want to go in with your heaviest hitters right at the beginning because then if they get taken out, you're not going to be able to use them again unless you revive them. And that's a whole other process. So you want to balance out your teams when you're attacking and you want to make sure that the team that wins the day that conquers that that zone is going to be able to defend. Now each zone is actually made up of 10 battle areas. So even though it's only two stars, it's still going to have 10 kind of stages. And those 10 stages initially, like I said, will be filled up with AI opponents. But then when your 10 players conquer those 10 stages, they will be filled up with your teams. And you can have one alliance member conquering multiple zones if they're fast enough. So you could potentially have, you know, just two players conquering five and five each. But that's not necessarily recommended because they're using too much of their roster. You want to balance it out and try to do, you know, one alliance member per zone. So 10 alliance members take zone seven, for example, and 10 alliance members take zone 11 at the beginning. And then they move on. They try to take zone four and zone eight and so on and so forth. Of course, as you progress, you want to start using stronger and stronger characters because you're getting closer and closer to the enemy's uh, levels. But you don't want to use weak characters at your at your home base at 7 and 11, for example, because then if you do lose and you are backed into a corner, it's much harder to break out of that if you've got very weak defenses right at the beginning. Another thing to take note of is you have to conquer the zone 100% in order for it to start sealing and becoming yours. Once you've conquered the zone, it's going to go into a 30 minute uh, seal period where it can be contested. But until, but in, in, unless it's contested, then you'll seal it and you'll get it for yourself and then it will be uh, locked. But the thing is that if you only clear 5 out of the 10 stages, you will not get it. If you clear 9 out of the 10 stages, you will still not get it. This is not so important for the very first attack phase because it's against AI opponents, but it's very important in subsequent defense and attack phases when you're actually attacking the characters the Alliance members have set up because they're going to have in invincibility obelisks, native tier 2 characters, cards, and a whole bunch of different ways to boost themselves with the the uh, leadership uh, or the leader's tools that they can use to you know, augment the fight. So you do want to take that into consideration. You don't want to be the only one going after a zone and getting maybe halfway there and then the time runs out on the attack phase and you basically just wasted your troops. Because once you attack with a troop, you can't attack with them again. I'm sorry I'm saying troops, but they're characters in the game. I'm just not going to say tunes, guys. So that is the basic premise of it. Once the attack phase is over, it's going to go into a defense phase where you can switch out your different uh, heroes if you want, but it is going to cost a small amount of, I believe, alliance tokens or crystals to switch them out. And then you can set up your defense teams and then six hours later, there will be another attack phase where you can either try to conquer more land or watch and wait for um, your land to be attacked and so that you can defend it or reconquer it if it gets conquered. One thing that I will say that is a strategy you can use and a strategy that was used against us is that if uh, you wait until there's a very short window of time before taking um, 
before taking the zone, you give the, the, def the defending team less time to react. So for example, if the stage only has 10 minutes left in the attack and you conquer it, they will not get 30 minutes to reply because the, the, the normal seal timer is 30 minutes, but because the stage only has 10 minutes left, they only have 10 minutes left to respond. So you can grind that, you can whittle that number down. You just have to be confident that you're going to be able to take their defensive teams with your attackers and you will be able to conquer it. Because if you fail in your attacks, you'll waste time and you might just, you know, sell yourself short and cut, cut off the time limit and then you just wasted those troops for no reason. So it's a risky play, but it is beneficial if you can get it done. Also keep in mind another fact, you can throw weaker teams, let's say tier 1 characters, level 66 stars, at the defenders to weaken them because the health doesn't regenerate between fights. So if they have a Doctor Strange, I can throw a couple of teams at him to, to whittle him down and then hit him with my very strong team that I know will win and that will be a very good defense team um, as a counterattack to when they try and take it back again. So there's a lot of back and forth and there's a lot of strategy involved in this. It's like a high stakes risk type game and there's just so many different things that you can do. I don't want to get bogged down with too many specifics in this one video. I'll leave more uh, in-depth strategy for other ones when I have more experience with this. I just want to let you guys know some of the beginner tips and some of the early things and early strategies uh, and kind of patterns that I've noticed that people will take. Another thing that's extremely important about Alliance Conquest to be successful, and this is probably the hardest part, it's communication with your Alliance members get something like line or whatsapp set up so that you can communicate with them maybe even discord if you guys want to do the voice chat thing and really organize your attacks with your members especially at the beginning it is crucial to get at least three or four zones in the very first attack phase because that's going to dictate from then on who is attacking and defending and who has the upper hand so it's very important to coordinate with your alliance and i would really recommend if you want to be successful in alliance conquest to do so with an outside app because the in-game messaging, let's be honest, it's pretty sorry. Another thing I want to address with you guys is the idea of why. Why should you play Alliance Conquest? I will start by saying that it's not mandatory. The rewards for Alliance Conquest are good and I think they're more beneficial for early or not max level alliances than they are for max level end game alliances. So if you are an up and coming alliance, I would recommend you trying out Alliance Conquest because there is a lot of rewards here that will benefit your alliance a lot. Benefit your alliance's level and benefit your alliance store level, which are two very important things for up and coming groups. Now, as far as collecting rewards while the conquest is going on, every eight hours, if you control at least one region, you will be able to collect mementos. And the mementos that you collect are dependent on how many regions you control and what star level they are. The two star regions will each give you 15 mementos, the three star regions will each give you 20, and a five star region will give you 25. So there's really no uh, huge incentive to conquer five, the middle one of five stars, because it doesn't give that many more mementos. It's a good strategic choke point to have, so you can control more of the map and more of the total space, and you can block off the, the potential counterattacks, but it shouldn't be what you prioritize in your initial rush because it's only worth a bit more as far as mementos go. The total number of mementos that each alliance member can collect per round is 180 or 175. So every alliance member will be able to collect that and then they can go into their alliance and they can donate those mementos in addition to gold or just aside from gold. So as you can see here, I donated mementos but not gold this time. And the mementos will give you fewer tokens but they will give you much more Alliance store XP and much more, many more Alliance points. So that is a really great boon to upgrading your Alliance store and really rushing its level up. As you guys can see here, our Alliance store is level seven at 77%. Before Alliance Conquest, it was around 20%. So this one round of Alliance Conquest, about five or six days worth, has given us almost a full level from level seven to level eight. That's gigantic. That's a lot of experience way faster than we would have gotten with gold and it allows alliance members to save gold by not having to donate it if you're just donating gold to get that alliance store xp if you do alliance conquest you don't have to do that in addition to the mementos once alliance quest is over once it's finished you will get a reward based on your ranking in your group of three 
I don't know the rank or the rewards for ranks 2 and ranks 3, but the rewards for being first place is 2 million gold, which is decent for every single alliance member, and then a mythic chest. Potentially a common chest, just some kind of random chest. Now I will say that I think the chest rewards are pretty terrible. I got a common chest and it had, I believe, 100 or 96 dimension debris. I've seen people with gear up kits, uh, experience chips, uh, and other kind of useless stuff. I think they need to revamp that because it seems pretty bad and pretty lackluster. But that also does play into the fact that it's not mandatory to do Alliance Conquest. If you're not interested in your shield or your Alliance level, if you're not interested in your Alliance store level, by all means, you can skip Alliance Conquest. Don't feel like it's a mandatory game mode, but if you want to have fun with it and if you want to be successful, I hope these tips have been helpful. I hope I've illuminated more about this game mode and why you should prioritize certain things and how you can be successful with your Alliance members in this game mode. It's definitely a team game mode and it definitely rewards people with more uh, organization as far as their group and deeper rosters, kind of like Shadowlands. So for those reasons, I think it's really, really fun. I'm gonna make another video later on, guys, talking about the things that I want to see them change in Alliance Conquest, because I think it's far from perfect. It is still in beta, so they do have time uh, to change it. But let me know what you guys think. I wanna hear your thoughts. How did you get on in your first week of Alliance Conquest? Did you do well, or did you get stomped? And what did you think of the video? Did you think that the rundown was good? What am I missing? What can I do better? Let me know, guys. Hit me up on the live stream on Twitch. And of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.